This is literally the biggest prawn I've ever seen in my life. To get a scale of this, I need to put it up next to my face. This is almost as wide as my shoulder torso. Good morning, everyone. It's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com in Lisbon, Portugal. We are having breakfast this morning at the hotel before we go out for a full day of sightseeing and eating. Got some mushrooms, got some scrambled eggs, got some fruit. Oh, and also I got some chorizo. Mushrooms fried in butter. I could not resist a couple pieces of... This one is some kind of chorizo and then... I'm not sure what this one is, but look at that nice peppercorn in there. Oh. Oh, that peppercorn. Fantastic. And also, I should tell you, it is like freezing. I'm in shorts and a t-shirt right now. I definitely need a jacket. I wasn't expecting, it's really cold. Not really cold, but it's very cool. And this is the middle of the summer in Lisbon. Oh yeah, this weather is, this weather is amazing. <laughs> and my hair sticking up. Can you see that? Yeah. It's not like freezing, but it's it's definitely pretty kind of cool. Oh, 18 degrees. And what is that in Fahrenheit? I mean, how do you change it? Uh, Which in Fahrenheit is 64. We are out now walking around this cool morning on our way uh, heading towards Castelo de Jorge. We made it to the plaza of Dom Pedro IV at Rossio, and so we're just walking through here. There are a couple of fountains on either side, and then right in the center is the main statue of Dom Pedro IV. Before going to the castle, while I'm in this area, we decided to stop by the Santa Justa lift, which is a, an elevator that dates back to 1902. And because the line is not long right now, I think I'm gonna go up to the top right now. On the lift now, about to go up. How many floors is it up? Uh, it's, it, I'm not sure, it's 42 meters high. 42, 42 meters high. And you, okay. with your ticket, you just have to show it to my colleague and you can oh, go okay. up there, okay? You can go up there. Okay, thank you. And now I am climbing up the iron staircase, circular iron staircase to the top viewpoint. All right, made it to the top. The elevator was designed by Raoul Menier, who was an apprentice of Gustave Eiffel. And it's built of wrought iron, and it was completed in the year 1902. From up here, you get a great sense of Lisbon. You can see Racio Square. You can see the castle of Sao Jorge. You can see the cathedral, as well as the, the waterfront in the distance. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> Bye. A, yeah, a, a vintage elevator in Lisbon. We're on our way to the castle now, which is just up the hill. I can see a view of it. Uh, and to save some time, we're going to jump on the bus. Oh, Giras, tens de ter calminha que a fila é daquele lado, tá bem? É daquele lado, ali. We made it onto bus number 737, and we're going to go up the hill towards the castle. It is a packed bus. We really wound up the tiny, narrow streets here in Lisbon. It was almost a roller coaster ride, but we have arrived to the top of the hill and welcome to the castle of Sao Jorge. Hello. 
that cost $8.50 for entrance. And this is a castle that is maybe one of the biggest attractions in Lisbon. It dates back to the 11th century and was built by the Moors. And it includes a, it's a citadel, so it's on the top of the hill. There's a castle and also on the same compound is where there is a royal palace. And also, from what I was just reading in the pamphlet that they gave me, or the brochure, um, this is also a privileged area of Lisbon where the elite lived and also get some more views of Lisbon from up here. And I love how the entire fort is just kind of sloping from how old it is and it's really nice, lots of trees as well. It's cool and shady. Just a short walk to the corner of the complex is the actual castle itself. There are 11 watchtowers that still survive within the castle and it was built as a military fortress for protection on a very strategic point in Lisbon, right on the top of the hill in a position where you can get a good view and, and see the other parts of the city and people coming up. You do have to be careful of the steps because they're so well, just like the just like the roads and the sidewalks in Lisbon, they're so well used that they are smooth and slippery. Whatever you do when you come up here, you don't want to slip and fall down. I think this is the tallest tower of the castle. From the castle we decided to just walk down the hill kind of curving looping around and we're on our way to eat lunch but I'm loving this walk through the narrow medieval lanes of Lisbon and the buildings awesome place to walk around and explore when you're walking around Lisbon it feels like you're half stumbling, half losing your balance all of the time because the, the sidewalks are so slippery and then so uneven with little sinkholes and sometimes the sidewalks are so narrow. This is such an awesome city. We're on our way to go eat at what is one of the most legendary and what almost everybody says is the best, the standard for seafood in Lisbon. Afterwards, oh, and this is one of the ultimate, maybe, I think it's the best from what almost everybody says for seafood in all of Lisbon. And we, we got here, luckily there was no waiting line, but we did wait just for about five minutes for them to clear our table. We're in here. I love the lively environment. You can smell the crab and the shrimp in the air and the butter in the air of this restaurant. And they just sat down and they give you an iPad for the menu. So all the different types of seafood. Spiny dye murex. Whoa. Tiger prawns. Crawfish. Lobster. Oysters. Barnacles. One kilo. Okay. One crab. Uh, clams with garlic. And they have just an amazing array of seafood. And also seafood is known to be some of the... Portugal is known to have some of the best coastal seafood waters of anywhere in the world. You gotta love the lively environment in here as well. They have tanks of fresh seafood and then it just, it actually feels like a Chinese restaurant in here, although it's, it's pure Portuguese. Oh wow, our first dish has just arrived. Thank you. Oh, thank you. This one is the clams. Yes, with garlic. Okay. Obrigado. Okay. 
I'm just already overwhelmed with seafood and I haven't even taken my first bite. Okay, seafood time. While this is hot and fresh, I am gonna take a bite. These are prawns in garlic and I think that's butter and when he delivered it, it was just bubbling over. You can, I, you can smell that aroma of garlic in the steam. Oh wow. And it has stopped bubbling but I think it is still flaming hot. Just pure goodness. Oh, those are meaty and firm. And along with those prawns, what is exceptionally good is how that garlic, just get a really, really close up look at that garlic. It is half caramelized. So it's crispy, yet it just has so much garlickiness to it. <laughs> okay, one more, I have to. On the menu, I think it said edible crab, but I think it's a local crab from the waters off Portugal. And what is insanely impressive about this crab as opposed to any other crab I've seen is the amount of eggs within the shell. Look at that, that's like, and they served it with two spoons in the side, it's like pudding. It has just a very faint bitterness to it. Just incredibly rich and, and you get little bits of, I think they have like, included some of the, they've sort of like whipped it up, maybe. And one more thing to explain about the crab is that it's served cold, so it's uh, it's chilled, which is, it makes it refreshing, very refreshing. I'm putting down the spoon and going in for one of these hairy legs. Oh, nugget, look at that nugget of crab there. And you can, oh, you can actually feel the, the hairs on this crab leg. <laughs> Well, the juiciness of the crab. It's so juicy. Maybe because of the way it's prepared and then how it's chilled. Yeah. That's just insane. The other seafood dish that has come out are the clams in garlic. And I think butter as well. Maybe I'll put some of these onto my plate. And these smell equally as fantastic as those shrimp. You can see all of those pieces of garlic on it. Just maybe some, oh, this one is covered in sauce and, and butter and garlic and, and goodness. Oh, oh, you just slid out. I wanna get all of that garlic though. Actually, I will just pick this guy up. That's stunning. Little clams, again, they are naturally a little bit sweet, and that is a salty, buttery, just incredibly garlicky goodness, buttery sauce. And I think what they do here is they bring a couple of seafood dishes, and then once you finish them, they bring some more, because if they were to bring everything at once, your table would just, actually everything would not fit on the table and it would start, your seafood would fall off the table. So we just got three dishes now and then some more will be coming. What I need to do next is just gather some of this garlic and just take an entire fork full of garlic. Look at that. Just caramelized, golden, yet half raw at the same time. Garlic is just one of the greatest culinary gems of anything, ever. Next up, I'm moving on to the crab claw. And they give you a mallet and a little, a little hitting board. Oh, you don't even need it on this. Oh, that just popped right off. Oh, and this just pops right off too. Oh. Okay, let me see if I can, oh no. I broke off the little claw on the inside. Okay, I will. I will, I, will get, I will come back for you later, but I have to eat the drumstick. Should I take this in one bite? Yes, I, I think I should. Wow. 
that is ridiculously flaky and stringy. That is insane. And what I love is that it really does not, it's such good crab that it doesn't need anything. I am already in a little bit of a seafood shock and high right now. But we're only halfway done with the seafood meal. He has just brought the next course. This is literally the biggest prawn I've ever seen in my life. And I also ordered some scarlet prawns, but I thought these were just gonna be little. These are gigantic as well. They are both huge. But just come back over here to this giant tiger prawn. To get a scale of this, I need to put it up next to my face. Just check this out. This is like, this is wider, this is almost as wide as my shoulder torso. Okay, I'm gonna set this guy down. Guys, I'm in, I'm in a little bit of a shock right now. I don't even know if I can describe this with, with English right now. Look at this beauty. Wow. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go right into that midsection. And I think it's, is this grilled or is it, I don't know, but I think it's cooked in butter. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm so, I'm so happy I'm using the knife upside down and I don't even have the energy to change it. Oh, wow. Okay, that's a good enough bite for my first. The firmness is insane. It's so muscular and it's so juicy again. And then it's salty and buttery. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of peel off the entire shell, maybe take out the entire flesh part. And yeah, this will be much easier with my fingers. Oh, it's so meaty and so giant. It's just, this is just ridiculous how big it is. It's actually ridiculous. All right. Oh. Wow. It's, this is unbelievable. Okay, and I will save that head for later. Just look at the size of the flesh of that body. Okay, and then for this, I think I'll squeeze on a little bit of lemon. All right. <laughs> Look at that section. That section, there are gooey things in it. There are pieces of, of muscular flesh. That is insane. It's buttery, it's creamy, it's muscular, it's a little bit salty. I love it with that squeeze of lemon on it. That is actually unbelievable. I'm like at an emotional, an emotional high right now. And just get one more look at the outside shell of this guy. And he just brought out the final seafood dish. I think it's the final one I ordered. And this is something I have never had before. This is a type of barnacle. And I think, I think they're called goose barnacles. These are very interesting, bizarre looking. They look like little, kind of look like little animal hoofs, but you can actually see the algae or some like green something seaweed growing off of them, the, the, the algae from them. These are very interesting. I'm not even totally sure how you eat them, but I think you sort of just nibble off kind of break it apart and just nibble off all of that outside material. Oh, and when I squeeze it, just juice runs out. The end portion kind of feels like a fingernail or like a hoof. Yeah, it really kind of looks, looks and feels like a hoof. Okay. Wow. That's very sandpapery and very like leathery. It sort of gushes with seaweed, seafoody, like seawater taste to it. I think that's the part you're supposed to eat. Oh. Okay, that is pretty good. It does taste kind of like a clam, but a little more, more of a leathery clam. Okay, so I think you take that out and you can kind of 
pry it open? Oh, that's I think I think that's how you open. Oh, okay, and what you want to eat is that thing on the inside. Okay, a man, a nice man, family sitting at the table next to me was showing me how to motioning me how to eat it. There we go. And you want to eat that little piece on the inside. You just flip out. Oh yeah. Moving on to my last prawn, and this is a scarlet prawn. And I honestly thought these were just going to be the little small prawns, but these are just insanely huge as well, and that deep red color. I'm going to delicately try to break off the head, maybe in his natural... Oh no. Oh, juice just came out. <laughs> okay, maybe turn it this way. I want to preserve all of that head juice. Oh no, it is just falling out onto the plate. I don't think there's any way to hold it in that little cup. Oh wow. Oh, <laughs> there's a pool of shrimp head fat on the bottom of my plate. Just from peeling this, I can feel how soft this prawn is. Oh, and little pieces, slivers, like, like strings of the prawn are coming off in the shell, which I will have to come back and lick. But you can feel just the juices seeping out of this prawn as I'm peeling it. I'm gonna leave it at that. And look at this, this is not only a giant prawn, but you can actually see like the veins and just strings running through it. Wow. <laughs> While the tiger prawn was meaty and muscular, this is melt in your mouth. You don't even need to chew. A baby could eat this prawn. It's so soft and so tender and so juicy again. This will actually, this will actually make you go insane. It's so good. It's like, I didn't even need to use my teeth to chew that. I chewed with, I literally chewed with my gums. I don't even want to chew. I just want to tuck it into the side of my cheek and let it slowly disintegrate. That deserves a moment of silence. Thank you. Obrigado. The only thing greater than having these oysters is having Nunu feed them to me. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off all of that barnacle juice from my hands in preparation for dessert. Oh, refreshing, lemony, lemony refreshing. If my adjectives and my words and my descriptions don't completely line up correctly, that's because I'm a little bit seafood intoxicated right now. I really, I'm not huge on desserts. I don't like sweets very much, but this is one dessert that I cannot wait to dig into. What you have to eat for dessert when you come to Ramiro is the prego, which is a steak sandwich. Oh, and it is hot and fresh and warm. Oh, you can feel the tenderness of that bread. And you open it up. Oh, it's filled with steak. Oh, and that beautiful thing. Oh, and you can see how the juices have already soaked into the bread. But oh, I, I, I absolutely wish you guys could feel the softness of the bread. It literally feels like a, like a feather pillow. This is a dessert to cherish. That beef is so tender. And the bread is so, so pillowy. That is absolutely amazing, but I think I will add a little bit of mustard. Okay, and as I took off that bread, that is another reason why it's so good. It's topped with more garlic. I love their use of garlic at this restaurant. Okay, that should be good. 
That beef is incredible in the whole combination. I, don't, I can't even think of a better way to have ended such a meal. They know what they're doing here. That was that was a stunner of a sandwich after a stunner of a meal. All I can literally do right now is just sit back in my chair. I'm even trying to just comprehend that meal. It was so good. Ice cream and lemon. Ice cream and lemon. And vodka. And vodka. But there's one more dessert that Nunu has just given me. I was honestly not expecting this at all. Okay, gotta eat it. Wow, that is like a slushy ice cream. That is lemon ice cream. Oh, but wonderful lemon. That is like yogurty and icy and rich and creamy and like freshly lemony. Oh, and with that splash of vodka. That is awesome, actually. That is really good. That's like a complete palate cleanser. Ying and I just managed to spend two and a half hours at that restaurant enjoying the food. That was literally one of the, the finest seafood meals I've ever had in my entire life. Everything was delicious. The variety of prawns were just insane. The staff were friendly. Shout out to Nunu, who was our waiter. That is a seafood paradise in Lisbon. And I think for the remainder of the afternoon, we are just gonna walk around the center, uh, kind of coastline area. Before we get all the way down to the bottom of the hill, we're gonna make a stop at the Lisbon Cathedral. This is the original, the one of the oldest cathedrals in Lisbon. It was, construction was started in 1147 and it has been taken over a number of times by different civilizations, but it remains one of the ultimate landmarks of Lisbon. I'm gonna go inside for a quick look. The entranceway to this cathedral is huge. And what you really notice about this cathedral is how thick the pillars and the columns and the walls are. And it is, I think it started off as a Romanesque architectural design, but since it's been through so many uh, civilizations, it has also, other parts have been added, so I know it has some Gothic elements to it, as well as some uh, Baroque elements to it, so it's a mix of architectural styles. We made it to the central Comercio district of Lisbon and we are now walking up to the Arc da Rua Agosta and it was built in 1755 to commemorate the reconstruction of Lisbon after a major, major earthquake. After already seeing this plaza multiple times from different lookout points, we have finally made it on the ground level here. This is the Praça do Comercio, and it used to be the site of a palace until a palace was destroyed in, a, in an earthquake uh, several hundred years ago, and then it was made into a plaza. It is an open space, a big communal public gathering area, and we're gonna go see the, the Tagus River up close for the first time. Now we have decided to take the metro and we are en route to go have what is hopefully some of the best piri piri chicken in Lisbon. We just got off the metro at Prato station. We arrived to the restaurant right across the street. It's called Frangasquera Nacional and they are famous for their piri piri chicken. There's a line outside, but I think it's only a takeaway restaurant. I don't think they have any for any seats in there, so we're gonna get takeaway. I'm not sure how long it's gonna take, but I think it's gonna be worth it. I, every now and then I will get a whiff of the grilling smoke coming out of the door. 
smells fantastic. That wait took about 30 minutes, but as soon as I stepped inside, that aroma of the grilling meat, it's just, it, it has made my mouth, I probably have some drool coming down my, my cheek. And she said there's a park just down the road. I found a spot where I'm gonna eat, and there's a garden right behind me, but it's kinda dark and shady, so the light is better here, because I wanna take some photos of this chicken. I got a, an order of potato chips. These are fresh potato chips. And then I also got a tomato salad, which looks fantastic with some onions and oregano in it. Oh, and it's hot and fresh. I think these are the ribs. And then also, I had to get a whole chicken. Oh, yes. Okay, well, we just gotta take a look at the chicken first. Oh, a little cloud of steam just came out. I literally did not want to take another step before trying this chicken. Oh, and which which piece? Okay, this piece right here on the top. This is a, a piece of the breast with some of the wing. That's awesome. It's so smoky and like charred. <laughs> and that's a combination of the oils and the juices of the chicken, plus what he, all that sauce that he brushed on. You have to have a close-up look at that skin and that char. <laughs> oh, the drumstick is so juicy, packed with flavor. Mm. And I think the potato chips have some oregano on them. Mm. Yeah, that's oregano. And you can taste that, they're homemade. That just has such a big difference from packaged potato chips. Next up for the ribs, and I think I got the same sauce drenched all over it. I can really taste the chili oil on this one. That chili oil is, is it's just a little bit spicy. But it, yeah, it has so much chili flavor. Oh yeah, and again, that oregano. That oregano is really good. And then again, that oregano and there are just a few onions. And I think she put olive oil and lemon or maybe vinegar in here as well. So I wanna take from the bottom as that has gone down. Mmm. Mmm. Really fresh, juicy, plump tomatoes. And then the oregano comes in nicely. I didn't finish it yet. I just wanted to eat a couple of drumsticks. Um, and actually we packed it back up and Ying and I are gonna go back to the hotel and finish it off because it's getting cold out here. It's actually really cold, just like this morning. So I'm gonna end the vlog for today now. Thank you all very much for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And also make sure you subscribe for lots more food and travel videos. And Lisbon is just an outstanding city. It's a, it's a beautiful city fantastic culture and mix of art and food and it's just a, a great place and I am loving this Lisbon trip so far. I will see you on the next video. Good morning everyone, it's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com in... Good, where are we? Portugal. Okay, we arrived in Lisbon. <laughs>